our life situation. And we blame anyone, everyone, except who? You and Angie. You can't make mistakes. How can you? If the mistakes happen, it must be someone else's fault, not mine. We all have a friend like that, right? We all know someone like that. Do you know someone like that? The second kind of people, and these are the very successful people. These are the people that are fully responsible for everything that happens in their lives. They know if I fail, if I did not pass, maybe I did not study hard, maybe I was keeping back bad companies, maybe I was playing too much on, you know, on my phone, checking Facebook or TikTok while the teachers were teaching. You think they see that when they fail? They don't see that. They only see someone else. These, these people empower themselves to be so powerful. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If you, if you still develop a victim mindset, you'll never be successful. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? You'll never be successful in life. And I'm telling you from experience. I still do have friends until today who still blame the South African government for their, for their, I mean, friends from Congo. Now we don't just have job because um, we don't have IT. They we're using a, a, a refugee status. So when we came here, they took us to the home affairs and they gave us a refugee status. I remember one day walking in town, me and one guy that was studying together security. And he told me that he doesn't have a job one year after. I'm like, Chief, where were you knocking? Which door were you going to? I got my qualifications today. The next day I got to knock a door, I got a job. So where, where were you going? No, I've been going everywhere, but no job. I'm like, I, I don't know where you're going, but for me. And in, the, in, in, in 21 years I've been here, I've never stayed without a job. Never. When I say never, I mean never. My job, the one job can finish today. Actually, my job doesn't finish and it starts to move on. The only job that finishes when I was working as a security guard, as, as a guard guard at Northgate. This is a funny story, ladies and gentlemen. I'm working as a, as a, as a, as a, um, as a car guard, and we were working in the parking, but the money was not for us. It was for the company. The money was for the company. So each and every time you finish work, you have to go and submit money to the company. And they will search you. If they find a coin in your pocket, you are fired. So if Alan, our boss said, give me my cape, we're having the cape, give me my cape, you are gone. And I was one of the hardest workers. Because they knew this line how much it can pay. If they post you on a certain post, they know already how much money come out of them. So if you come with less, they assume you stole the company's money. So I used to bring more than expected most of the times. And on this day, I'm in the office, we're going to submit, we are on the queue. How much? 200. Papa, here I am. We go out. How much? 500. And I come there, I put my money. They search me, they find 500 in my pocket. And Alan told me, bring my cap. I'm like, boss, I didn't know this money was in my pocket. I, di I didn't even know. I've been working here for almost a year and a half. He said, Claude, you've been stealing from the company. You are gone. I left that day with tears in my eyes because I'm thinking, like I told you before, I need to parent for my mom to this day. Did that same way. I need to parent for my mom. I need to send food for my mom. I need to pay the school fees. And here I'm fine because of five grand in my pocket. I went home that day and I called a friend who was working for another company because now my mom is working hard. My man is really speeding. I called another friend who was working for another company. They were having a cluster. And I called him. I'm like, can, I, can you please help me out? Because this happens to me. And he gave me the number of his boss. And I called him. They sent me, they gave me another site in Cluster Shopping Center, different company, the next day. Why did I get that job the next day? Why did I push myself? to get a new job, who can answer me that question? Why, why I could not afford to stay at home without working? 
Because I have copper five. Yes, what else? Responsibilities that are waiting for me. All those are correct, but I'm gonna sum it up in one word before I finish. The reason for doing something, I call it your why for doing something. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know why you're doing something, you're gonna come up with excuses. If you don't know why you are doing something, you're gonna give half the effort, you're gonna give 50% of your effort because you don't know why you're doing it. Yes or yes? Yes or yes? But if you know why you're doing something, your why is gonna get you out of bed each and every morning. Your why is gonna get you out of bed at 3 a.m. to study. Your why is gonna keep you in the house while your friends are going to party. It's gonna keep you in the house to finish that project, to finish that book, to finish that assignment. While your friends are going to? To party. Your why is gonna keep you in the good company while your friends are busy gossiping and talking about other people's life, you're going to say, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I've got a future to look after. And whatever I'm telling you now, the way I, where are my youngsters? I always tell people, whatever I'm telling you, you are lucky to have us telling you this now. I wish I had someone who could tell me this at your age. If I had someone who could give me this information at your age, my life was going to be very, very far. Do you get me? Do you get me? I'm going to give you one story before I'm, and, I'm, and I'm ending here. Yeah, when I was at school, I think I was in grade 10, 11, 12. I was very intelligent, by the way. You can see. Yes? You can see that I was very intelligent, right? Obvious. You know, it's obvious. I was very intelligent at school. And I'm going to advise you to do this, if you want to. I was having four of my friends. These four of my friends were, call, were calling each other brothers for life, right? And all these brothers for life are doing good for themselves in life, let me say. We were not taking any nonsense from one another. If we see someone misbehaving at school, our brothers for life themselves will come to you. We're not, we're not waiting for the teachers to, to come and tell you that what you did was not good. Brothers for life will come to you and say, did you study children? Did you do assignment? Did you pass? What was your mark? How did you do? And we sit together, and we're discussing together, and we study together, and we're going to move together, and we're going to work together. Some people, they were even begging, some parents, they were begging for us to take their kids into our circle. Because they could see the way we were behaving. They could see the way we were moving. They could see how we were applying ourselves at school. If I'm not at one of my brothers for life, home, I'm at my home. If they're not at my home, they are at their, their, their houses. So if my parents are looking for me, they know exactly what to get me. And when we are there, we're not talking about women, we're not talking about gossiping, we're, not, we're talking about serious stuff, ladies and gentlemen. It's cool. It's cool. Do you, who, do you have any friends like that? Do you? Yes. Those are the people to keep close to you. So those are the people that you have to keep close to you. And you know the people that you have to keep away from, right? Do we have anyone that we have to keep away from us? Yes. At least you know. At least you know. Now what we made is the application only, or you apply it. Thank you. OK? So they say that the time is almost over, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We need to separate the group, you said? Okay, so close to stand the general talk now, but um, he's going to have some quality time. With